Welcome to Movie World Plus, the place where we talk movies. I'm Andy Signor, and I'm here to review the controversial smash hit Sound of Freedom. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been hearing about this film everywhere. It's been making huge box office out of nowhere, beat Indiana Jones on 4th of July, I think. Uh, and I've been hearing all this controversy about it. So I wanted to go see the film for myself to make up my own my own mind. And honestly, I think there's a lot of stuff out there that's just unfair. Now, it's complicated. There is some controversy, and I'm going to explain it all. But overall, I never at any point felt like this film was selling me some right-wing conservative agenda. I also never felt at any point like the film was trying to hit me with religious propaganda. Uh, this film is an important subject matter. It's about child trafficking. And uh, it's a true story. Uh, a guy named Tim Ballard, who was out there actually trying his to stop this and did saved a lot of kids out there in underdeveloped countries. Now, there's controversy over its uh, star, Jim Caviezel, who has made his own comments and opinions, some of which I don't agree with. Uh, and that has seeped into the film itself due to his appearances and some of the outlets and audiences that have promoted this film have sort of mired this film down into conspiracy theory, QAnon, conservative places that stepping back and watching just the film itself, I didn't see or experience any of that in it. And I think it's unfair for so many people to just paint the film a certain way just because of certain audiences. It's like, you know, blaming a creator based on what the, for what their fans did. Um, the film itself is not to me controversial any, any way. It's not political. It's not religious. It's just a true story uh, with an important subject matter that I would recommend, uh, especially for its budget. It's a little long and we're going to talk about the ending. I had some issues with the ending and I'll explain uh, the length of it could have been trimmed down for sure. But overall, uh, the film is pretty good. Now, Jim Caviezel, I don't agree with everything he's out there spouting personally. I don't want to get any of that here. This is a movie channel. I want to focus on the movie channel as a performance. I thought he does a pretty good job. He's a little stiff at times. I've never been a huge uh, Jim Caviezel fan. I liked him in Frequency with Dennis Quaid. Obviously, he played Jesus, which I thought he did well. Uh, but he, he tries his best in this. It's a good it's a good role for him. And uh, I'm not a huge Caviezel fan, but I was impressed. I was more of a, a fan of the actors. My God, these two kids are incredible. And I want to give them a shout out. Cristal Aparcio, who plays uh, and uh, Lucas Olivia, they play a brother and sister in the film. This is heart wrenching, and their performances are so well done. So it, 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 I don't know how you have a heart if you watch this film and you're not instantly just crushed at what these two children are now put through. The film centers around them and their father uh, in a, I, I don't know where the, sorry, which country it's in, but the, basically they're, uh, someone prompt comes in and says that the daughter is so beautiful as a singer that they should come to a talent uh, show. And the father gets all dressed up, takes them into town and takes them to this show where there's a bunch of other kids he knocks, they're excited. She's like, come back tonight. No stage dads. He, he goes, he comes back at night. That's at the time. And the room is empty and all the kids are gone. I imagine the nightmare. I mean, I would never leave my kids in a room like that all day. But besides the point, he thought it was safe and sound and it wasn't. And these kids were all stolen. And uh, it's just heart wrenching to then watch. And they do a good job while intense as it is. It never like glorif like just shows you it in just graphic detail. Thank God. But it pans away and alludes to things and it talks about things that these kids are going to have to go through. That's just heart wrenching and real. This is happening a lot and it needs to stop. And we need to make sure we rally uh, funds to get it to stop. And I think the film shouldn't be uh, con there shouldn't be controversy over this film just because there are conservative or religious audiences seeing it. It does annoy me. Uh, I don't understand why this film can't be separated from its own audience. I, I a lot of liberal people, I'm sure, are watching and seeing this film and supporting it, too. So it's very strange how a lot of the media is trying to paint it. Now, there are some cons uh, conspiracies out there that are trying to say, oh, well, they're AMC is disrupting the film and yada, yada. They're this is nonsense. Uh, AMC and the head of Angel Films have now teamed up to quell this boycott out there, uh, saying that it's nonsense. Uh, AMC has been a huge distributor. Uh, uh, what's champion of this film. Uh, tons of people have seen it, I guess through AMC more than anything. Uh, and uh, they're trying to stop this. 
Conspiracy theories are prevalent in America. So much garbage and spread. More than one million people have watched Sound of Freedom and AMC more than any other theater chain on the planet, yet people falsely came, claim otherwise. It's bizarre. And that's the problem. There's a lot of very aggressive people who will jump at a theory as quick as they get it. And that's not helpful. <laughs> that's not helpful here. And uh, yeah, even the filmmakers, the, the distributor have joined before to say this is that leave AMC alone. They have helped us tremendously. There's no boycott needed. There's no disruption happening. Uh, but all this stems from what's really fascinating about this film is, yes, there are rabid fans who are there watching this film because of the serious subject matter. But there's also a lot of faith-based um, audiences that have stepped up to the plate. And uh, there's also a bunch of investors that stepped up. Angel Studios is a crowdfunded studio outside of the studio system, and they rally funds from users, people out there to rally uh, money to make. And these investors early on enough, if they invest, can actually see returns back. So um, there's a lot of people invested in this film. And what's really interesting is they've also created this pay it for uh, method where you can then uh, buy tickets for audience members who can otherwise not afford them. Now, and it's, it's look, all of this is brilliant marketing, brilliant marketing to raise money for the film. Uh, and they have. And if you look for, they've sold 7 million tickets at 15 bucks a pop. That's a lot of money. More money than's actually shown in some of these box offices. So it's a little confusing. Where does this money go? Well, if you follow the fine print, the money goes towards Angel Studios. They can do whatever they want with this film. They will try their best to give away tickets, but ultimately the money will be used to help get Sound of Freedom streaming on this website as well as to make other films. Basically, all donations to pay it forward our donations to Angel Studios to spread the movie is how they get away with this. So it's all allowed. You guys got to read the fine print before you donate. And uh, look, I can't be mad at this. I can only be mad at the film's ending because Jim Caviezel takes center stage. There's a little note at the end when you're watching the film, stay tuned for an important message. And I stayed to watch what is this important message. And it's Jim Caviezel for like three and a half minutes talking about how important this movie is. I want to play a quick snippet from this. You know, Steve Jobs once said, the most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. Abraham Lincoln credited Harriet Stowe when she wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. This powerful story inspired millions to rise up and fight against slavery. I think we can make Sound of Freedom the Uncle Tom's Cabin Fucking of 21st century slavery. What? I mean, it goes on. I can't play it all. You can go look it up. Look up Sound of Freeman's special me uh, message. You can watch it. This part of the film lost me. Now, I was invested. I support a lot of what is going on. I think this is an important message. I think this film and the storytellers could help to get people more invested in this topic. I, I agree with it all. But it just continues to go crazy and crazy as Jim Caviezel speaks directly to camera telling you how important this film is and how they need your help. You can stop child trafficking. How, how can we all do it? Well, pull out your phone and scan this QR code because then you can buy more tickets for people so they can see it. And then we can all see it. It's like a, a pyramid scam. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to call for what it is. This isn't money going towards an organization to stop trafficking. No, it's going towards angel studios. And in some ways I can't be mad at them. They're raising funds. But it is frustrating to see using this important message, this important topic that we all are invested in, watching these kids go through the story that they've been in, a true story that f really focused on these kids. And at the end of the movie, I'd have to sit through Jim Caviezel selling me to tell everyone how important this movie was and to buy more tickets for those who can't afford it. I got to say that left a bad taste in my mouth. It is brilliant marketing. But it's a fine line of like, is this ethical? Like, is this right? They're not breaking any laws, technically. But it is weird that he, the actor that you just watched who stopped this all, is there reading a script telling you it's the Uncle Tom's Cabin. Like, it's intense. And I'm sitting there just like, huh? And I like I see through this. I I I'm I agree with the importance. I'm not trying to I, I do, but this is all money to the studio. This isn't money to kids or saving kids. This is money so Angel Studios can make more movie. Angel.com slash freedom. And it was like campaigning at the end for the studio to be like, make, we need to make more money. And so when I see people out there and articles and like the Hollywood doesn't want you to see this film and all this stuff. Sure. 
20th Century Fox had this film. They shelved it. Now, I've done a little bit more homework, and it seems like there was like a, a period there when Disney bought 20th Century Fox where this film, along with others, got lost in the shuffle because it wasn't like a... I don't, I don't know if it was a clear diss by Disney. Like Disney hasn't released a lot of bigger budget films. They've left a lot of movies on the table in that deal. I just don't think they saw the potential, and I don't think it was that they didn't believe in the subject matter. But of course... Angel Films, Jim, everybody are going to use that to advantage. And wise, let's make Disney the villain. We're the underdog. We're the David and Goliath. Like, let's beat the studios. I get it all, but I'm not challenging the reality of the film itself. Like, what's oddly, the film, I at the beginning, I, I, I like the film. It's a true story. I would advise you see the film. But I could see how the marketing and the agenda behind buy more tickets for people and Disney kept it and all this stuff. I don't know how accurate all of that really is. Um, and beyond whether it's how accurate doesn't kind of matter, they are using it to their advantage to sell more tickets. And I can't be mad at them for that. Good on them, right? You did a, you're selling the tickets, but on the on the back of the subject matter, and these kids of the true story, um, do they get a, do they get a piece of this money that you're raising? Where does this money go? Really? Like at the end, you're telling everybody to buy. It's a lot. It's a lot. So I can see why there's controversy. I can see why some audiences might upset people. Who are like, There's more to it. But again, stepping back from it all as a film, which is I, I want to focus more on the film, but it's it's hard to not also be fascinated by the marketing of this film. I, I can't be mad at him. It's, it's, it's smart marketing. They're not breaking laws. You could argue morally, ethically. Maybe it's a little much to use this subject matter to, to force to buy tickets, but I would argue the film is good. The film is worthy and film should rally some people to be like, hey, we got to talk more about this. How are we not? How is this allowed anywhere? How are we allowing this to happen? Like, I understand the frustration, the anger of audiences after you see this film. Like, this is f terrifying that this still happens in our country and across the world. We should put all resources to figure out how to stop it for the sake of children. 100% agree. But is supporting Angel Studios going to do that? That's the debate. That's where that's where I'm hung up. And I'm curious what you guys think about it all. If you watch the message did that trigger you, do you think no? The message was spot on, Andy. I think they should. I want to hear your thoughts because I'm still noodling it. Overall, I will give the film though a thumbs up. I didn't. I, I do think it's a worthy film, worthy message. Really great acting, especially by those kids. My God, they got to me. And it's an important message that needs to be out there. So yeah, that's that's what it is. It's not a super conservative religious movie. It wasn't. Um, there's a couple messages of you know God's children are not for sale. And it's in context of this guy's a religious guy. At no point did I feel like I was being preached to, except for at the end when he wanted me to buy other people tickets for this most important movie of all time. You lost me at that point, Jim. But up until then, I was entertained. I'm curious what you guys think. If you like this uh, honest commentary, hit that subscribe, hit that bell for alerts, smash the like button, uh, and I'll leave your comments. Did you see it? Are you going to see it? Are you avoiding it? Did you see the controversy beforehand? Did it affect your experience? I want to hear all your thoughts down below. Appreciate you guys watching here on Movie World Plus. Lots more reviews coming. Haunted Mansion, Oppenheimer, and more. So stay tuned.